And you know that chapter five is all about functions, knowing the parts of it, and also being able to work with functions and parameters and arguments. So this video lecture is going to be more just some review about labeling the parts, and also we're going to do some hand tracing so we can work to see what's actually happening when you use a function. So these are the parts that we're going to label. We're going to go through three different examples, label the parts, and then do a trace table for each function. So first is the function name. So we've got mystery is our function. We see that it's got a return, so this is a return function. When I look for a function call for a return function, I'm going to look for it as part of a statement. So here I've got mystery, here I've got the function call. So function name, function header, function body, function call. And the type of function is, re is a return function. I've got one local variable in here, result, and I've got parameters x and y, and I've got arguments 2 and 3. These don't look like the arguments we've used in the past because our arguments were variables, but a literal could be an argument as well. So let's just kind of trace what happens. Whenever you have a function definition, the computer ignores it until it actually gets called. So if I was working as the computer, I would just kind of keep going through here and ignore that. And the first thing I would do is this statement, result equals. And it happens to be a function call. So now that it's calling the function, the computer's going to go back up into the function and execute the statements. Now I've got 2 as my first argument and this value is going to get passed into x which is the first parameter. So x is going to be 2. And 3 is my second argument and it's going to get passed into my second parameter y so y is going to be 3. I'm doing a trace table. I'm just going to put one over here. I have the values x and y. x is 2 and y is 3. We get those values from the arguments. Now I've got a local variable result so I'm going to add that in here and its value is x plus y divided by y minus x. Well, remember x is 2, y is 3, y is 3, x is 2. So I'm going to do my order of operations, 2 plus 3 and I get 5, and 3 minus 2 and I get 1, and I'm going to do my division, integer division, so 5 divided by 1 is just going to be 5. So result is 5. Now the next statement is to return result. So it's going to take the value of result, so not the variable itself, just the value, the value of result, and it's going to go back to where the function was called. So it gets put right here. Now that this function is completed, it's not being called or executed anymore, these variables are removed. Hopefully you remember that from the reading. And I've got a different variable here, result, and its value is 5. That's got returned from the function. And then what would happen is the computer would print the result it would print 5. Okay, so that's our first example. Let's take a look at the next one. I've got a function called mystery. This is the name. Here's my header. Here's the body. I see that it's a return. So this is a return function. I'm going to look for a return function call. I've got it right here with mystery. Okay. And then I've got a local variable z. And I've got here I've got a local variable x and y. I've got parameter x and y, and here I've got arguments x and y. So just remember the arguments come in the function call, the parameters are in the function definition. So if I'm playing the computer here, I'm just going to skip over the function here, I'm going to skip over this, and I don't do them until they're actually called. So this is my return function, here is my void function, and here's a void function call. This is the first thing the computer is going to do is call main. So now I'm going to come up here and execute these lines of code. I've got two local variables, so let's just start a little hand trace here. And x is 5 and y is 7. Now the next statement is to print this, and this is a function call. So I'm calling mystery. I'm going to pass in the value of x, so not x itself, but just the value, which is 5 and the value of y, which is 7. So this is going to go into my first parameter, right here, and this is going to go into my second parameter, right here. Now, I still have this function going, but it's calling this function. So I've got another little trace table here. It's got its own x and y, and its values happen to be 5 and 7. And I've got another local variable, z, and its value is x plus y. So I'm going to add x plus y and get 12. 
Now z kind of keeps going. Now z is going to be z divided by 2.0. So really it's going to do what's on the left, right hand side first. z is 12 divided by 2.0. So I have float division and I get 6.0. So it's no longer 12. Now it's 6.0. The next statement is to return z. So it's not actually returning the variable, it's going to take the value, 6.0. It's going to put it right where the function was called. So it's going to come here and the computer will print the value of this z, which is 6.0. Now when this function is finished executing, these variables are removed. And once this function is, is finished executing, these variables are removed. And all we're left with is just what was printed. Okay, let's try one more. For this one, I wanted to try a for loop just to give you some more practice with your hand tracing. So here I've got my function mystery. It's a return function. I've got my function header, my function body. Here I've got a function name, function header, function body. This is my return function. This is my void function. Here's my void function call. And remember, this is my return function mystery, so I look for it in the statement. It's right here. Here's my return function call. I've got a local variable x, and I've got a local variable m. Here I've got a local variable x. So as we're executing this, the computer ignores the function calls until they actually get called. So the first thing it's going to do is main function call. It's going to come up in here to main. Main has a local variable x, whose value is 4. The next statement is a print statement, and the print statement calls the function. Now I've got an argument in here. The argument is x plus 1. So it's really going to do the math. So I've got x, the value of x is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. So the argument that's getting passed is 5. It's not 4. So the argument 5 is going to get passed into the mystery function right here. So now I've got a local variable m, and its value is 5. I've, when I start the for loop, I've got a local variable x, and its value is going to be the first one in my range. So it's going to start at 3. Inside my loop, I have m equals m plus x. So I'm going to do 5 plus 3, and the new value of m is now 8. So remember, it's going to take its old value on the right-hand side, Com compute it and then put the value on the left hand side. Now I'm going back into my loop. X is going to be incremented by 1 and it becomes 4. Inside my loop I have m equals m plus x. So I'm going to add m and x and I get 12 and I finish this iteration. I'm going to come back. I'm going to increment x again. It's going to become 5. Inside my loop I'm going to add so 12 plus 5, and I get 17, and I finish this iteration. Now I'm going to do it again. x becomes 6. Inside my loop, I'm going to add 17 plus 6, and I get 23. And I've completed my loop because, remember, x is not going to become 7. It always stops less than the top number. So 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm done. Now the last statement is to return m. The value of m is 23, so 23 gets passed right in where the function was called. This function is finished executing, so these variables are gone. The value already got passed. I'm going to print, or the computer is going to print 23. And then this function is finished, and these variables are gone too. So you're going to get some more practice with this in class if you want to work over these problems by yourself. I've included them on the website. You can go ahead and try marking them the same as I did. Make sure you understand everything and you will get work in small teams and do an assignment similar to this in class so that you can really practice this and get good at it ready for problems on the test or anything in the future where you're going to need this information.